You know, it's been a long time since I've done a video and I keep saying I'm gonna do a video every week. It's been a couple of months, but it's 2020. So let's hope this year goes a little bit better. Welcome back guys. Let's keep it going with the true crime stories because honestly, I have fallen in love with doing videos about that. I am still gonna do movie reviews once in a while whenever I get a chance. I just haven't been able to go to movie theaters as much as I wanted to, but Netflix, Amazon Prime and all that stuff, they have really good true crime stories out there. So today let's talk about Sympathy for the Devil is an episode episode on I am a killer it's on Netflix right now I believe it's episode number four on the first season I know season two is out right now but I haven't been able to catch up on that one either but sympathy for the devil stuck with me the most out of all the episodes in season one and I've been wanting to talk about it for a long time even though season one's been out for a long time but this case is about the triple axe murder that happened in January 18th 1991 at the center of it we mainly have Miguel Martinez and Miguel Vanegas I refer to them by last names because it's easy to keep track of them but let's first talk about the night of the murders. So Martinez and Milo Flores were very good friends. Milo Flores is the son of a district attorney so to Banegas and Martinez this kid had a lot of money and on top of that it's revealed that Flores was doing a lot of drugs whether it was cocaine, weed and he was providing this for Martinez and Banegas. So they were hanging out at his house you know smoking, drinking, doing lines of coke, whatnot, playing video games and then they get it into their heads that hey we should go do something fun which fun to them translates into trash in someone's house and unfortunately for Mr. Smiley which we'll get into it a little bit later Smiley is somebody that Martinez was working for and for some reason he had a key to his house again we'll get into this a little bit later so that made that house an easy target the plan was honestly just to go there trash the place and take something at some point during their conversation killing came up and Flores was saying ah you wouldn't you wouldn't do it you know you're too chicken to do it and Venegas took it as a dare which makes no sense to me but I guess if you're like heavily influenced by drugs I'm guessing at that point, you know, anything ha could happen. But Venegas gets it into his mind saying, like, thinking that, hey, this is a dare. And at the same time, this guy or this kid believed in the devil. He believes that he was sent by the devil or possessed by the devil to do these things. So these three drive up to the neighborhood and the plan was for Flores to drop them off two blocks from the house. That way they could go there and Flores will go around the neighborhood and then pick them back up. Basically kind of like a heist. But of course that never happens. Flores drops them off. Flores provided them with knives, a baseball bat, and the infamous axe that was used to murder them. So whenever Martinez and Venegas go up to the house, Venegas sees that somebody is laying, laying and sleeping on the couch, which was very surprising to them because in, during this night, nobody was supposed to be home. What happens next is that Venegas tells Martinez, hey, we have to take care of this, that so we have to do it now. It's basically the devil's doing that I have to do this work for him. And Martinez says in the documentary that, yeah, this is not what he wanted to do it, but of course he was in shock. He was kind of intimidated by Venegas because of the way that he was acting during that time. But anyway, the first victim that gets murdered in this case is Ruben Martinez, which who was 20 at the time Venegas mentions that he hits him with the axe but right before that the first victim kind of like opened his eyes to see him and Venegas believes that the devil actually had his back during that moment because he put him back to sleep but I'm just thinking dude the guy was literally half asleep of course like he probably just kind of like opened his eyes didn't realize what was going on and just went back to sleep he hits him with the axe and you know ends up murdering him and then later Martinez admits that he stabbed the body he doesn't know if he was dead or not but he just remembers stabbing him once and then after that Martinez is kind of like ends up throwing up he's in shock he doesn't know what to do but Venega tells him don't worry about it I'm gonna take care of the rest and ends up going into the two other rooms in the house first walking into a room where there was a teenage boy murdering him he was 14 at the time his name is Daniel Duenes and then eventually going to Smiley's room who ends up murdering him in his sleep as well and then since he's sent by the devil or whatever sees a cross and then decides to flip it upside down which is very um, terrifying I would say but the biggest question about this case is like why did they do it or or, you know what what was the motive behind all of this and that that's one of the things that I wish I could you know find answers to but I haven't been really being able to find anything like even Martinez and Venega doesn't understand what happened but I do feel like there's something going on where Flores does not go to jail like the whole thing with Milo Flores not going to jail is a mystery to me because he's the one that helped him get there I mean even though he didn't pick them up at the end Martinez and Venega do mention him a 
lot. All they ended up stealing was a TV and a car because they had no ride, so they ended up taking Smiley's car. What was interesting about this case was the whole thing about Martinez. Martinez was 17 at the time and Venega was 16. Venega actually doesn't get the death penalty, but Martinez does. Martinez gets the death penalty because Milo Flores testifies against him in court saying that, yeah, you know, this is how it went down. Martinez kind of implicated himself because he wrote a letter detailing the stuff that was going on. Maybe he was a little bit coerced, but who knows? But the whole thing that I don't understand is that Venega admits to doing the entire axe murders, but he only gets 40 years in prison because he was a minor at the time. He's actually going to be out in probably less than 20 years or whatever time he has remaining. Martinez, on the other hand, he gets the death penalty, which luckily for him gets moved to life in prison. But it makes no sense. You know, like the, 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 something must have happened. There's a lot of things that went down with the, his whole attorney. He had a div divorce attorney for as a defense, which sucks because he's a divorce attorney. Of course, he's not going to do a good job. So when they got him for the death penalty, you know, it was a pretty easy win for the for the district attorneys. And one thing that the documentary does in on Netflix and also there's a documentary out there on YouTube that I kind of watched. Uh, I do feel bad for Martinez, but I have no sympathy for Venegas because Venegas talks about how he was dared into doing it. Basically saying that like, you know, coming from Hispanic culture, you know, a dare is a dare, you know, we're all machistas and saying that, you know, you have to prove your worth. And in a way, yeah, I kind of agree, especially because back in the day, you know, if you don't drink a beer, or you're not having a drink with like the men in the group, you know, you're not really being a man. You gotta prove yourself to the men that you're worthy of being in their group. So in a way, I feel like Venega came from that mindset. He tells a story about how he knew at eight years old that he was a son of the devil because he poured like a bunch of black widow spiders on his chest and they didn't bite him or anything. And I mean, obviously they're not gonna bite him because black widows don't bite just randomly. Like, you know, if, unless they feel threatened, they won't bite you. That's that's a fact. So, I mean, I feel like if I did that shit, I probably won't even get bitten either. Not, not saying that I'm gonna do it, but I don't think I would do that. But what was the biggest mystery for me in this case was Milo Flores. He doesn't talk in the documentary, but there's a snippet in this YouTube video and hopefully I can find the link to put it on here. Somebody comes up to him and asks him, you know, like, do you feel bad that your friend got the death penalty? And all he can say is, I don't feel comfortable answering that right now. Dude, it's a simple yes or no. Like, if he really was your friend, then I would say, yeah, dude, like, hell no, I wouldn't want him to go to the, get the death penalty. But Negas, on the other hand, which was interesting, when he got caught, he got sent to Juby and escaped and then crossed the border, but later on they caught him. So he was doing 17 years for, you know, running away. In, in a way, a lot of the things that I find is that Milo Flores kind of got away with it because his father is a district attorney. But his dad does mention that, you know, he would have rather had his son been put through the jury so they can judge him for himself. That way he can clear his name because he mentions that now he has to kind of like talk for him. Like his son still lives with him apparently. And, you know, it sucks because, you know, your dad's doing all the talking. You don't want to come out there and show your face, which I get, you know, in this case. I think the night of the murder, something must have happened between the three of them because Milo provided all the weapons. He's the one that was like, hey, here are the weapons, go do damage. Like, why would you take an ax, knives to trash a place? You don't really need all that. Maybe a baseball bat, yeah, because you want to like break stuff here and there, but you don't have to com commit these murders. Something that we do find out about, Smiley. Smiley is a youth pastor. He was uh, very well liked in his community, but Martinez mentions that, you know, he used to molest him and touch him and all this stuff and I'm not trying to you know play down on Smiley because obviously he passed away I feel like maybe that's one of the reasons why Benega felt like he could go ahead and and do what he did that night. Because if you think about it, Martinez knew Smiley's schedule, so he was a little surprised that there were two people in the house, especially one being 20 and one being 14. Why is a young boy at this guy's house at this time? Especially Martinez, he feels very, very sad about the things that happened between him and Smiley. Like, he seems very, very, like, he can't even talk about it. Like, it's in the, in this documentary on YouTube again. Uh, he talks about how he would touch him inappropriately. And I feel like at some point, Martinez probably confided in Vanegas and maybe had told him because Venega does talk and say that rephrasing what Venega said without offending anybody but he called him you know he's like oh he was a fag like you know he's gay and obviously to somebody from his mentality of being machista being a man and all this all that stuff it's not gonna look good so I feel like him being on drugs and you know having that mindset that he's the son of the devil like hey that's even a better reason to do this other theories that I've been hearing about was that these two guys that were in the house the, the 20 year old and the 14 year old is that maybe 
they, they, they just had crossed the border but since Smiley is such a well respected guy and you know he's very helpful according to the interviews done they were thinking that maybe he was hiding them out in his house which I would rather have that be the truth rather than you know Smiley like taking advantage of little boys but what's mind boggling about this whole case is that Martinez gets sentenced to death Venega gets 40 years and Flores just gets nothing so something had to have happened between Venega and Flores I think Flores definitely knew what was going to happen that night because he did provide the knives so I think in some way he should have been sent to prison the other interesting thing about this is that both Martinez and Venegas do say that they were there during the murder but I'm wondering if Flores actually drove up to the house with them and then knew saw what was happening and then just dipped because I think that's probably what happened I, I don't think Flores went to do drive around I think that Flores was probably already there and saw what was happening and just decided to leave so in a way Milo Flores to me is a big question mark big red flag so I, th I think so he definitely knows more than he was telling to the jury other things about this whole thing is that fingerprints went missing hmm that's very interesting like how do fingerprints go missing from a police department that's one thing they do mention a lot is like that the, a lot of the things in this investigation were, were done poorly like how do fingerprints go missing and then they mentioned that the axe was later used literally taken from evidence and used to chop down branches at, from a christmas tree like who does it who takes an axe from evidence that was used for a murder to do that so there was a lot of stuff that i learned after watching the netflix episode that was done terribly terribly wrong like it, it made no sense so do i think milo forrest got some help from his father yeah i i honestly would like i mean if you think about it if your kid is in trouble and you have this power to maybe get him out of it wouldn't you use your power to kind of get him out of trouble yeah probably i mean shit if you're a district attorney and your son is somehow involved in this triple axe murder then you probably might want to help him so i'm going to pass a question over to you guys you know what do you think happened tonight what do you think milo flores's involvement was in this case was it just that was it just providing the weapons in a ride or do you think he was there or do you think he's the one that came up with this plan because remember this guy had money his dad's a district attorney so he could definitely get away with a couple of things or was vanega really just that crazy to do all these murders also so what do you think about Martinez? Martinez in this case to me I feel like he got the worst punishment. He was the scapegoat in this whole case. So they were like you know what he's the oldest let's just get him for everything you know everybody will be happy. Instead I think Venegas should have been the one that got life in prison. And currently I think they're trying to get Martinez out of prison. Like this episode kind of opened up a lot of people's eyes and to me this episode will always be that one that kind of just lingers on my mind. So that's why I have to do a video on this guys. So yeah. If you haven't watched it, watch it on Netflix right now and then I'll link that YouTube link down below. But anyways, I am going to be doing another video. Make sure to leave me suggestions on what I should talk about. If you guys like this video, make sure you give it a like. Also, subscribe to the channel if you guys like my videos. And as always, guys, stay tuned.